I'm gonna do a, a sake set, okay? So uh, you wanna throw a bottle and then uh, maybe uh, two cups to go with it, okay? And uh, to uh, be able to make the same size of the cup, you need to have a very good measurement. And uh, usually uh, you wanna have, uh, the stick is called tumble stick, so that you can measure the, uh, the depth and the width, okay? Uh, here is the uh, my tumble stick. That uh, first you throw your first one, and then uh, you kind of adjust this O-ring to you can style it and uh, measure the exact width and the, the depth, like this one here. And then when you're making the next one, just go and check it. As long as the uh, depth and the width is the same, the outside is adjustable. Okay, you can trim the foot. So uh, it's much easier to make something that is uh, uh, same size. So uh, I want to show you how to uh, use this, okay? And uh, if don't, you don't have this, I have a couple here you can borrow from me, okay? So here, and uh, I will give you uh, four uh, O-rings so that you can hold it in position. And if you don't have uh, the exact ritual, there's an easy way to do this. Go to the uh, uh, Chinese restaurant, get the uh, chopsticks, and then you just cut it and use a rubber band to tie it, tie it across. Okay. So and then um, if you want to use it only for one time, you can just cut it, cut to exactly the size. If not, you can may maybe use a marker to mark it, so you know exactly how how deep and how wide. Okay. So that's called tumble stick. Okay. And uh, we, go, we are going to uh, also throw up the hump, okay? So meaning you are going to uh, just focus, you want to have a, a big chunk of clay, but you just focus on the top. That, and after you're done, you just cut it up, okay? That's called throw up the hump. But first, uh, for the uh, sake set, okay? The important thing of uh, uh, pouring vessel, the important part is the lips here, okay? And uh, when you are pouring, you don't want to have a drip. Okay? That's the minimum requirement. But a lot of people don't know how to make that spout without dripping. So I will show you how to do that when you when you pour the spout. Okay, and just watch this one here. So you pour, and it's that you stop right there without dripping. Okay, so that's the minimum requirement for that. Stop right there. Okay. So, um, there's a little trick here on the lips. Okay, so I will show you how to do that. Okay, so that's the uh, sake set, right? And throw up the hum. So, when you throw up the hum, usually you don't measure it because you just uh, provide uh, enough clay. And after you're done, you, you just cut it off, cut it off from the top. And uh, you don't need to focus, you don't need to stand the whole piece either. So the first thing, if you, you don't do this, okay, you toss the clay on the back and you will try to stick it, but it's very hard to aim it at very center. So just do it. As I do, uh, make a circle and then try to put the clay. The closer to the circle, the better. The center, the better. And then, if you are worried about your clay is not sticking on there, the very first thing when you when you try to uh, center, push it down, push it down, and then uh, just use a the hand there on the corner, so you seal it. Okay? Push the clay down, and then you kind of seal the coat the corner so the, the water doesn't get underneath, okay? So that's the very first thing. And since I'm just throwing up the hump, so actually I am just picking the clay from the side. And that's the clay I'm going to use. And uh, for the bottle, it might be a, a little bit bigger size. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more clay here but just focus on the top. 
Okay, so that's the amount of clay I'm going to use. And anything when you throw up the hum, the important part is you want to have a little bit of an indentation here. So when you're centering, you kind of squeeze okay, the finger, you're squeezing down. So the bottom part is smaller than the top. The reason why you are doing that is when you cut off from the, the clay, it's easier for you to put your finger underneath and lift it up. So make sure that you kind of uh, making a shape like a donut, okay, the donut, okay. Right, that's center and trio. And make sure that um, a lot of people, it's hard to figure out how deep that without going through, right? So actually it doesn't matter. Usually I have a, a finger here, outside, under, underneath here. So this is where I am going to cut, okay? Just make an indentation there. And just leave enough clay. The foot is adjustable, okay? If you leave a lot of clay, that's fine. We can just remove it. But if you are leaving not, not enough, then uh, you will have a hole whenever you cut it. So make sure you leave enough, okay? And usually I'm, I kind of measure it here, so that I got enough room. So that should be good, okay? And then after that, I just widen the base a little bit. Okay, and try to pinch and lift it. Keeping the opening a little bit smaller. So when you're coloring, usually this is how I do it. Kind of a pinch from the side and with this index finger there to control it. You see that? So the rim is under your control. Okay, so that's how you do it. Okay. Lift up a little bit more clay. And make sure each pour when you try to lift the clay, you want the surface to be slippery. So you, you always see that I kind of uh, uh, focus on lubricate the surface before I uh, lift it. Right, and I'm keeping the, the neck here a little bit smaller. And now I think it's uh, thin enough, so I'm going to uh, make the shape. So inside hand is kind of a pushing out right there, pushing the clay, and then my hand is slightly bending the rib, depending on how much curve I have at one. So if I want to have more curve, I can bend it a little bit harder. But uh, for the uh, sake bottle, you want to be handled with the hand, one hand, so you don't be uh, too wide, okay? Uh, 
and always you want to be uh, make sure the bottom is nice and smooth and remove all the water or if you have slip remove it from the inside and clean it up before you close the top and the way I do I guess I don't use a lot of water so there is not much uh, water or slip you can you need to uh, pour it out uh, you can see that uh, I use water very efficiently I don't uh, usually have my uh, have the uh, sponge on my hand and then try to squeeze it because the water is not going to stick on the surface so the best way is a little bit of water and a little bit of slip and mix them together that is the most uh, efficient way for to lubricate the surface a little bit and then uh, follow through the curve from the base And remember, you want to leave a little bit of uh, clay, a little bit of thickness on the rim so that when you pour in your spout, you have a little room. Another way to uh, shrink and uh, use the, I call it crawl, use the uh, five fingers and then you just pinch from the side and then with brace your, your hand, your fingers on your right hand and uh, just pinch it, even pressure. Yeah, pinch, pinch that all the uh, fingers is touching that surface and then uh, you kind of move it toward the center. Right, so come back and uh, check the uh, the curve you see that this curve here and try to go in and then this there's a little bump here so it doesn't look nice so you will you want to come back to follow through the curve the rim a little bit thicker so I kind of uh, compress it down and then uh, for pinch the spout uh, usually if your rim is not level and okay, not very level you want to try to pick the higher point and use that spot as your spout okay but mine is very level so it doesn't matter which <laughs> spot so just get the finger here to define how wide you, you want your, your spout. If your finger is kind of spread out, then your spout will be uh, wider. Support it there and then slightly pull up.
and then when you move out, slightly push it down. Okay, so the lips, see the one I pull up and then pull, push down, there's a little lips there. The bottom is like, like your lips. So when you pour the water, like the lip like this, when you pour down, there's you tip over, so it's harder for the water to climb back up. Okay, so it would, when the water pour out, it'll drip right there from there. So you stop there. Okay. If you don't have a little curve there, if your your spouse like this angle, when you pour out, the water is gonna come out from there. So make sure you when you pour out, you pour out and you push it down. So there's a little bit there. Okay. So that's how you pour out anything with the, the pouring method that you wanna pour out without dripping. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah. And later I will, when it's dead or high, if I trim it, I actually will go use a knife and then do a little carving, kind of exaggerate that, the leaves a little bit more, okay. So that's why I want you to have a little bit more clay there, so you have, you have some room for you to do the adjustment, okay. So after that's when you, after you trim, after you trim, and before you put it through the piece of fire, kind of adjust that spot, okay? Right. Now, throw up the hump, so you wanna uh, remove it from a piece of clay. And usually, you are going to use a string, okay? Use a string. It's a cotton, cotton string, and uh, this was pulled out from the rice bag. If you have a rice bag, okay, the rice bag. Tied it like on your hand here, so there's a little crossover, so your finger is gonna hold right there when you're cutting it, so it doesn't slip of your fingers, okay? So, cross it, and just maybe a twice of the base, okay, the amount of uh, length, about twice of the base, okay. and then you hold it there. And the easier way for beginner for you to practice is that you could use a wooden knife and maybe do a undercut. And you can cut it as close as far as you can. Right. So to keep yourself a guide, a guide, the, the little one. Uh, room for you to put the clay right there, right? Put, put the string right there, okay? So first, you wanna stretch your string and then let the wheel go in, put it right there on the indentation and the left hand kinda of go across here to maybe like seven o'clock, okay? Until it goes to about seven o'clock. And then you let go of your left hand. And while the wheel is spinning, pull your right hand, okay? So you will have the straight kind of cross over and then you cut it, okay? That's the main reason. Okay, so put it right there and let go and pull with your right hand, okay? Is there a reason why you use the string instead of just the wire? Uh, yes, the wire is kind of a stiff. Okay, it's not like the uh, string that it's very easy to form a circle, right? And also, if you are using the string, it's harder to cut a uh, very uh, level. Okay, sometimes your hand is not uh, so. Uh, and uh, if you are used, you are get used to this way. Actually, this is very very easy and good way to do it. just go and then cut and pull and cut. So. This is for more like production people. They don't bother to make a lot of small pieces and then put it on at a time. They want to do maybe throw a hundred or maybe 50 small cups at a time they do that, okay. 
there. So, but uh, it, it's the, it's another way to learn. Okay, learn another way. Right. So that's the uh, the body, and let's make a cup. Again, make sure you have a, the shape like a door knob. And for little guys, usually I just use my syrup. I'm pinch with my thumb and finger first. I make it thinner and then I just use the my whole pressure like fingertip to fingertip here. So fingertip. And one other reason that why I the, I throw very clean is that I try to use the point pressure. So you see that when I'm using my fingertip to fingertip, I didn't even add any water at all. But the smaller area touch the surface, it creates less friction. So you don't need to have that much water or slip to lubricate. Right, just fingertip to fingertip. Right, so no friction. Another cup, ready to cut. Before you cut, you make sure that you measure the size. All right, so that's about the size. Put it aside and then cut it off. try to remember uh, the curve and how much curve you have it here right so the width is fine uh, the height is a little bit too high so you can just chop it off a bit me to smooth the rim so for using the chamois usually this is the same material as the uh, you put the stuff underneath the bed okay same material so you want to uh, just tip over okay just kind of using the edge of the chamois and okay? you don't need to do like this Okay, that's too much friction. Just tip over, okay, tip over. And then all you need is this curve, right? The curve, small curve. And then I just use your both index finger there and I kind of compressed it, okay? Like this, and then you compress it here. Okay, so that's a little tip for you for when you are using the chamois. Okay, 
so it's easier when you have a little the smaller base it's much easier for you to lift it up from if you throw up the hump from the big chamber plate if your base is wider like very wide there's no room for your finger to uh, fit it underneath and pick it up so that's the key when you want to throw up the hump make sure you center to a donut shape so the base is smaller and you just work on the top portion after you're done cut it up so your finger is fitting right there okay so it's very easy to pick it up without deforming okay if you have a very wide you kind of try to put the finger there sometimes the, the rim is deformed okay so that's the uh, throw of the hum and the socket set any question about it